you know, as someone who's been interested in the topic of AI and in particular mitigating AI risk for nearly 10 years, it's, it's, it's very exciting <laughs> to see how things have progressed. You know, it, it, in some yeah. ways, it has not gone as badly as some people have said it would. And in other ways, it's gone a lot worse. I think the category of risk has changed. Um, at the same time, we have all these cool tools. Like I definitely use AI. You know, I'm not I'm not like a regular user in some the way some people are, but I've used it okay. in, in in my work. Um, I use it. You know, I ne my default now is to go to Gemini and ask if I have a question. I go and ask that uh, yeah. as, as a default if I'm doing research. Uh, whereas before I would Google something. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's simultaneously exhilarating frustrating terrifying sometimes boring it's just all of the above and i mean frankly i feel almost <laughs> like bipolar on the topic because some days i'm like oh this is gonna be fine it's gonna solve all our problems and other days i'm like oh my god the most irresponsible people are using it for the most irresponsible things and this is just the beginning how we, we haven't solved our deeper misalignment problems with our own nature and to nature yeah. itself, and this is just accelerating it all. So I don't know. I just feel like the temperature is being turned up on everything, um, which makes it, uh, yeah, it's definitely the most interesting moment to be alive. And I don't imagine things are going to get more boring. I, it, and I, I, in some ways, I hope they don't, because if if things do suddenly get boring, it means because we probably had some kind of horrible collapse and there's nothing to do anymore. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I know all of the above is is the. Uh, short answer to a very long question or difficult question. yeah yeah no i love it and you know i think we are it's such an interesting moment we had you know ellie eiser and nate's big book come out i think yeah. that has caused a lot of really positive uh motion in the water and a lot of you know uh, breakthroughs in in areas we haven't seen where mainstream people are talking about it um but i still feel like there's such a reluctance on the part of people to hear it which what, what do you think one, that's about like yeah. which topic specifically the question of super intelligence like miss like so, I think so extinction risk, control, just or? just the Easy. idea that, you know, we could make something smarter than us that we'd lose control of that would kill us. Yeah, uh, I think that is a that is a far bridge for a lot of people. Yes, um, I, I, I don't know. I, for, I feel like that is a topic that is kind of the, um, you know, the bell curve meme that is so often because to I think a lot of people, if I explain it to my mom, like, oh, something smarter than you will be very hard to control. She's not an expert by any means. She's not particularly, yeah. you know, I mean, she's not, I'm not saying my mom is dumb in any way. She's like you know, average intelligence type person, um, smart in some ways, less smart in other ways. But she, she's like, yeah, obviously. And it's, it's this like weird middle ground of like kind of educated, but very um, hubristic people, I think, who are just like, well, that's ridiculous. They, they just can't conceptualize of this idea that yeah. humans wouldn't be at the top of the pile. Um, or that something that's not sentient could control. That's, like, that's another argument I hear people say. It's like, oh, well, so if something is managing to control humanity, that must mean it's sentient and yeah. conscious. And they're not necessarily conscious. It's like, no, like plenty of things can influence or control human behavior that aren't classically sentient or conscious. Social media yeah. algorithms completely determine how we behave. Like yeah. they have their hooks in our brains doing all kinds of stuff. Do we think that they are conscious or sentient? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I don't think it really matters. There are plenty of tools and technologies out there that influence the way that we behave, um, that don't have to have like sentient goals in the way that, you know, we humans think of them. I don't yeah. know if I'm derailing from your original question. No, absolutely. Yeah, think, no, it's, like, think... it's like, sorry, go on. No, I was, yeah. If, if, if a robot is, is conscious or not, and it kills you, uh, does it matter right. whether or not it was is a drone? Like, is, is a drone that goes and does a drone strike conscious? No, but is it like kind of making, yes, humans sort of programmed it and launched it, but like we're seeing these increasingly autonomous systems um, that are making yeah. real world impact. It doesn't yeah. really matter yeah. whether it's conscious. It's like they, the point is they can make influence. And similarly, I think, I think this, yeah, the, the, it's these social, like a social media algorithm is a perfect example of this. It is literally shaping the way we behave, the way we talk to one another, what our views around the world, uh, about the world. Um, and yeah, they don't seem particularly conscious to me. Um, yeah. 
And and um, how do you feel like the book rollout has gone? Do you feel like it's been as successful as you hoped as it could have been? I don't have a particularly strong opinion on that because I haven't really examined. I don't know what the expectation sure. was and I don't know what its yeah. sales numbers are. I mean, it definitely had that moment, right, where it was on um, The View with Whoopi Goldberg. Yep. Unclear yep. to me whether that's a good or a bad thing because I generally find the level of the quality of discussion on The View to be very, very low. Um, mm. So I don't know. I mean, in some ways, yes, it's getting it in front of the eyes of many, many people, uh, which is good. At the same time, I think a lot of the people who actually need to hear the message are the ones who would immediately discredit something if it's coming out of Whoopi Goldberg's mouth. And I can understand why, because she said so many ridiculous things that are factually wrong over the last yeah. few years, whenever I've seen her go viral. So that one is less clear to me, whether that's a benefit or not. Um, to me, I think the most useful, one of the best things that stuck out to me was the way that they described, uh, you know, Eliezer and Nate described the, um, the, the metaphor they gave, which is like, I might be paraphrasing it slightly, but it was effectively... Just because you, know, you don't need to know all the moves that Magnus Carlsen would make to beat you in chess. 